Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today I'm going to show you how to create and use universal custom GPTs for any model. Are you watching the right video? Well, do you use more than one AI chatbot? Are you tired of rewriting similar prompts for each one? Would you like portable custom GPTs or access anywhere prompts that you can use across any of the frontier models? Then yes. Questions answered in today's video. Portable universal custom GPTs. What are these? How do you use and create these quick access model agnostic custom GPTs? And we'll end with the most important questions. Why should you care? How do these universal custom GPTs help you and why should you use them? All right, first question. What are portable universal custom GPTs? Short answer, they are just saved prompts. They are not unlike pinned chats in Gemini. They are not unlike custom GPTs in chat GPT. They are simply saved prompts. With the document upload function across the four frontier models, so chat GPT, Gemini, Claude, Perplexity, with the document upload function, we can now prompt any of these models with documents. So that's why the, these, these universal custom GPTs, they're just saved online documents. Google Docs, Word Docs, whatever your preferred format, that's all they are. The key is to create them in an accessible manner, so online in a shared folder, keep them organized or make them organized, kind of speaks for itself, pretty straightforward. You can see my Google folder right here. We'll talk more about it in a second and give them clear, concise, and helpful names. But let me show you how they work. Okay, so we're looking at ChatGPT, and I'm going to, using a document, so I have an email revisionist custom GPT, but we're gonna use the universal custom GPT that we're here for, obviously. Okay, so upload button right here. I'm gonna pause, this is pretty cool with ChatGPT, the ability to add from Google Drive is pretty brand new. Uh, you can also use connected apps, so Microsoft OneDrive and Microsoft OneDrive for Business, which includes SharePoint, which could be pretty cool for those who use SharePoint. And finally, you can upload it from your computer. But we're gonna add from Google Drive, and occasionally it does this, and all you gotta do is hit the refresh button, hit this again, it's new, it breaks. Prompt library and email revisionist prompt here we go so this is just a prompt that tells chat gpt hey i'm going to give you an email please review it give me feedback and then rewrite the email the purpose here isn't to show you a neat prompt it's to show you how we can prompt the model simply using an uploaded document because if we can upload a document here we can upload it anywhere and so we can use the same prompt across many models all right so i'm going to go ahead and hit the send button ChatGPT is going to ask for the email to give me feedback on. I'll go ahead and give it that email. And then it's going to give me the feedback. And then it's going to ask me if I want to rewrite the email, uh, given the feedback that it's provided. And of course, I'm going to say yes. And there is the email. But let's talk about the one outlier, uh, which is Claude. So Claude does not have the ability to connect to Google Drive the way Gemini does. In fact, Perplexity doesn't either. Um, so what do we do here? Well, we click the Upload button, and then the only thing different is that you download the prompt beforehand. So from Google Drive, you can download Google Drive or Google Documents as a Word document or a PDF. I just go with a Word doc. Uh, and here we go. Email revision is prompt. So I upload it. As soon as it's uploaded, I hit the send button and it works just like ChatGPT did. That's it. We upload the prompt across any of the models and it's gonna give us the same results uh, that it would had we just copy pasted the information in here. And the reason, the reason I did this is because Claude does not have the ability to save prompts the way that we can pin them in Gemini, the way that we have collections in Perplexity, or the way that we have custom GPTs in ChatGPT. So there you go. That's how we use it. The next question is how to create these quick access universal custom GPTs. 
Well, if you were watching a second ago, you, you already figured it out. It's just a Google Drive folder. Uh, there are some nuances that I can share with you here. Uh, you can see that I have all of these prompts already in here. Uh, the big win is this template. So I've got this open over here. All it is, it's Mad Libs for templates. So just fill in the blanks. If you don't know what Mad Libs are, um, fill in the blanks. So assume the persona. And then I've got a references section. I've got a rules section. And if I don't need one of these, I just delete it, right? And of course, before I start, if I'm going to create a new prompt, I'm either going to take one of my old prompts and duplicate it if it's going to be similar to one of those, or I just I right click and I duplicate the template and I go from there. So I would fill out each of these sections and I've been over prompt creation. So check out videos in the description down below. If you're looking at this kind of confused, those are I fully explain how I build these in, in those other videos. Uh, the last thing I want to highlight here are the personas. Um, and so I've spent a number of months rewriting and rewriting personas. And so instead of rewriting it for the next prompt that I want to create, I can just come here and copy it. So I've got work personas, I've got some productivity personas, and then personal personas that I have not created yet. But um, personas are helpful because you're telling the model where you're coming from, you're giving it context. And again, I've covered that in great detail in the videos linked in the description below. Um, but ultimately, this template setup is part of my prompt library solution. All right, I want to make sure I hit all of the important things here. How do I set this up, or what's you know how, you know what's the, what's the key here? Again, a folder. It's shared. As you can see, I've used the kind of the AI sparkly star emoji. Bard kind of assumed this as its logo some time ago. Gemini still uses it. You can see it right up here. Um, and so I just went with that as the emoji. You know, whatever blows your hair back, it helps your eyeballs recognize it um, in when you're searching for stuff. So that's why I used an emoji, and that's why I generally use emojis. Um, what else? Share this. So it gets real fun when you're sharing with others. Um, and if you have multiple Chrome personas, um, I've got my personal, I've got uh, military, I've got the demo account. Um, and so I've shared, of course, this folder across all those accounts. So no matter which account I'm in, when I go to my folder, which it's important to bookmark your temp, your, uh, your prompt library, and you can see that I've done that right here. So no matter where, no matter what Chrome profile I'm in, this folder right here with the three stars, the sparkly stars, shall we call them, folder, and they all look exactly the same. So no matter where I'm at, I can I can pull open this folder, go to my prompt library, and go right to the prompt that I'm looking for. And it's always going to be the best last version of the prompt I created. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a bit. All right. So... Oh, and share with friends. Of course, friends, family, coworkers, colleagues. If you're all working out of the same prompt folder, uh, there's a lot of goodness to that collaboration that can happen as well. All right, let's continue on and let's talk about why. Why we want to use these, why we might want to use these universal custom GPTs. Well, you know, kind of the obvious answer is they're ready for use with any model. Um, so... I could be working on anything and I need one of these prompts to use with the chatbot. And of course they're ready and it's going to work for Claude. It's going to work for chat GPT. It's going to work for Gemini. It's just going to work for any model. It's going to be ready to go. The second component of this is they are preloaded. These prompts come preloaded with any examples that you might need. Now I've talked extensively about examples and the benefits of those links in the description down below. If you're like, why should I use examples? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to pivot to a prompt that does have examples in it. And so this is my OER writer. Uh, this is a prompt that writes officer evaluation reports. And you can see the prompt here. And I've covered this in detail as well. Um, by the way, all of my saved prompts here will be linked in the description down below should you want to make a copy of them and use them yourself or repurpose them. In any event, here's the prompt. Should be familiar with it if you've seen the video on how to create OERs. If you haven't, feel free to watch that. I'm not going to cover it here, uh, but this is the prompt. The prompt relies on an extensive series of examples. They don't doesn't need to be extensive, but I just provided an extensive uh, list of examples of previous officer evaluation report rater comments, so it can pull from these as an example 
when it creates the OER for me. Uh, and you can see here, there's just a ton of examples that's included with it. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the prompt and the examples all included in the same document. So it's this modular, great little modular package of prompt, again, a universal custom GPT that I can use for any model. So if I'm not getting the results I like from Claude, I just pivot, open, open chat GPT to new tab, upload the same document and see how it goes. The third piece to this is, as I explained before, Claude does not allow you to save your prompts. And so this solves that problem. These universal custom GPTs um, allow you to use a prompt from anywhere, which now comes from your library uh, for Claude or any model without any the tedious copying pasting, which is no fun. All right, what else? Uh, easier to create and edit these than custom GPTs. It's just a document. You open it up, you make your changes, and it's saved. Um, as you know, with online documents, they all now save in real time. Uh, with custom GPTs, there's some clicking. You got to click to edit. It opens it up. You got to click the prompts. And I'll just show you. <laughs> here you are. You're here. You got to click on this and then edit. Give, you know, it takes a second. And then you come in here. You got to you got to blow this out. Um, and then you got to close it when you're done. And then you know, go back to where you were. So a little bit shorter. So it's a little bit quicker for editing your your prompts. Um, not gonna lie, it's not a whole lot quicker, but it is quicker. Uh, collaboration is easier with yourself and others. So how is it easier with yourself? Well, if you are creating a prompt that's at all similar to a previous prompt, then it's just a right click and duplicate and then start from there. Or you're just right clicking your template master and then renaming that, jumping in there and filling in the blanks. Um, so collaborating with yourself is easy, collaborating with others. So you can share this folder with other folks, whether it's your coworkers, family, friends, and when they see what you're doing and you see what they're doing, you know, there's, there becomes that, that cross pollinization, uh, goodness that happens when, um, you know, you just, you see what they're doing, they see what you're doing anyways. So the opportunity for collaboration is, is really great there when you're all working out of a shared folder. Um, the templates again, make this easy and the personalization of persona. So what do I mean by that? Well, anybody that's using a prompt, perhaps from somebody else, there, there's going to be components that just aren't going to work for you, generally speaking, because you are a different person than them. Um, your role may be a little different, uh, your perspective, your outlook. There's always going to be things I would submit, at least one thing that you're going to want to change or tweak. Um, and the persona piece is probably the, the most likely thing that you'll want to change. Um, as you can see here, these are all very personalized because I'm looking for specific I want, I want the model to adopt a specific mindset. And so if these are templates that someone can grab and copy paste and duplicate versus like clicking on a custom GPT and chat GPT that they can't edit, they can grab this, make a copy, tweak the persona to better fit their actual persona and then use that much more. Then they will have a more personalized, better customized universal GPT. All right, what else? <laughs> yeah, these are these are the kind of the wins here. So it helps you prevent. Oh, I, I missed model hopping. Yeah. So often you'll be you've created your prompt, you drop it in the model via copy paste or whatever, and it spits out some results, and you're like, oh, that's okay. But I wonder what Claude does. And then you go over there, and you, so you'll. You've dropped it into perplexity. You get some results. You're like, well, that's okay. Well, what does Claude look like? And then so you come over here and you paste it in here. Well, then you paste it and you're like, hmm, wait a minute. Let me change this. Let me change that. And so you've already changed your prompt. And by the time you land somewhere else, where was where did the good prompt go, right? Where did, where did you last leave off? And so if you're modifying a document instead, as you jump from model to model, you're using the same prompt. And if you tweak that prompt, you go back to the source so the source data, which is your templates gallery right here, I'm sorry, your prompt library, and you just keep tweaking the source document, when all said and done, after you've jumped from model to model looking for the best results, you're gonna have the best last version of that prompt saved in your prompt library. Lib library. This, this, this concept is important because um, I'm gonna talk about prompt scattering in a second. 
But before that, I'm going to talk about the find it later anxiety that you can also eliminate when you know that all your prompts always go here. It's like the home for your keys at your house, right? So you never have to look for your keys because they're always where they belong. Well, if your prompts always belong here, then they'll always be here when you go to pull up a prompt and execute one with a, with a model. And it's always going to be the best last version of that prompt. So it eliminates find it later anxiety. I've been alluding to this last point across all of these, and that is what I'm calling prompt scattering. It's when you're bouncing from model to model or you're, you're, you know, you've created a prompt in a document somewhere, you've copied and pasted it into the model, but now you're in the model, so you're tweaking it a bunch of times. And so it's not the same prompt that you have in the document. Um, and then where you end up after you do some model hopping, anyways, you're, you know, you've got these different good versions of prompts across a bunch of different models or documents. You have good components scattered across these, but in no, in no document do you have all the best components. Well, when you create a prompt library and this becomes your source data, then yes, then this is the place that has the best last version of all your prompts. A central location promotes prompt incubation. <laughs> Immediate access to the best last version of any prompt. All right, so, oops. <laughs> Why should you use universal custom GPTs? Portable and modular, and they come fully loaded with examples, like I showed you before, ready to use with any chatbot. And they're easier to create and edit than custom GPTs. The ease of sharing and collaboration with yourself and others, and it helps you avoid prompt scattering and promote prompt incubation. All right, as I always say, why should you get better at AI? Because humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the only way to get good at AI is by using AI. Thank you for watching. If you're gonna try any of this, or you do go and try it, and you make it better, or you have any feedback, please let me know. Love that stuff, really appreciate it. Please don't forget, linked goodness in the description down below. All of the prompt examples in that folder or all of my prompts in my prompt library will be linked in the description below so you can download those and make a copy of them or make a copy and download uh, and, and try out your own versions along with a bunch of other stuff. Again, just tons of link goodness in the description down below. Please like, subscribe, and share. Helps the channel. And as always, if you have questions or if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now please go and be productive.